Hey YouTube, I'm back with another unboxing video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the unboxing for Intel's new 13th Gen i9 900K. So this is it. I decided to go ahead and get one. Um, it's silver now instead of gold for some weird reason. Uh, but the packaging is kind of condensed, um, but it does look really premium. I do like this, the way they do that. And then just kind of for comparison for those who have the Ryzen system, 7000 series. So they both open up in a similar fashion. The AMD one opens up like that. It's magnetic. The Intel one opens up from the bottom. So it go, it's gonna do, oh, actually now I took that back. It opens up from the back. So there we go. Um, and then I think in here, the case bed, there it is. So there's your Core i9 case badge sticker. I do like this uh, little packaging thing here. And then the chip itself, this looks like recycled plastic or carbon or something. And then you have the really shiny i9. I think it's, you twist to open. There you go. All right. And there we have it, the i9 13900K. So this is 13th Gen Raptor Lake. This is launch day. I did get this from Micro Center. They probably have, I think at the local store that I went to, I think they probably have like five of these left. There was probably like 20 people this morning, similar to the AMD launch uh, back in September. Um, but that's basically the CPU. So let me put that off to the side. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is there was some discussion on my stream about uh, Z690 support. So this is Z690, I purchased this DDR4 board. This, I've had this for almost a year. I purchased it November 4th of last year, which was launch day for Alder Lake. So there's a 12700K. So I, last year I went really budget, right? Like I didn't buy the highest end, and I went DDR4. Uh, but when I was at the store, I started thinking, you know, this thing, the reviews show that this is pulling like 300 watts. So my concern with the Gaming X from Gigabyte was, well, how is the VRM going to hold up uh, when rendering videos and stuff with this motherboard? And I think myself and the sales guy at Micro Center kind of thought that, yeah, this is this will probably work, but it's not going to be a good experience. And then the other thing that I didn't like about this board, because it, it being DDR4, there's no debug code. It just lacks a lot of things. So ultimately it would work, I would have saved a lot of money, but I impulse bought the, this is really heavy, Z790 Aorus Master. So just like what happened to me when I went in uh, to Micro Center last month when I bought the 7950X, uh, I ended up having to get the XX70E Aorus Master at the time because they didn't have the ACE. And when I was there today, they still didn't have the ACE. So I kind of splurged all the budget that was gonna go to the ACE on this because they didn't have the ACE for Intel. They didn't have it for AMD. Um, and I was like, well, if I do comparisons between these two processors, is it really fair at the end of the day if I'm doing DDR4 on Intel on a, on a cheap $200 motherboard it's lacking a lot of features versus, you know, a high-end AMD board. So a premium flagship board like this with DDR5. So not only did I buy a new Z790 motherboard, I did also buy more RAM. So I bought the exact same kit that I purchased for Ryzen. So this is XMP uh, Intel. It's memory meant for Intel, but I, I run it on my AMD system today and it works fine. This is 5600 mega transfers at cast latency 30. So it's not the highest end. You know, it's not 6,000 for Ryzen and it's not like 6,400 or whatever high frequency RAM, um, but this is supported on Intel. 5,600 is the maximum DDR5 spec for Z790 and for 13 gen Raptor Lake. So we are gonna be pairing it up with this. That way, I, when I do comparison videos on the channel of our AMD versus Intel, I have apples to apples comparison. They're both gonna be using the exact same DIMMs, 64 gigs across two DIMMs for both CPUs, identical RAM, and 
identical motherboard brand. So they're both going to be running Aorus Master. Um, so I didn't really want to kneecap uh, Intel in any way. So I thought, you know what, I'll just make this as fair as possible. We'll do Aorus Master versus Aorus Master, Intel versus AMD, the highest end SKUs on both sides. It could be the exact same 64 gigabyte memory kit from G-Skill. All right, so this is the old Z690 motherboard with the Alder Lake system in here. All right, here's a quick how to remove a graphics card in the top slot if you have a big air cooler that comes real close to it. So you see there's not a whole lot of space. I don't know how well that's showing up on camera. Um, but if you look in there, not a whole lot of space. What I like to do is I like to take uh, one of these, this is one of those uh, little sleds for a hard drive for a traditional three and a half inch hard drive. I have this from like an old case that I used to have. Um, so what I do is I take the end of it here and I basically go in there and I press on it that way. This is plastic and it's a blunt edge, it's not sharp. So there's no, no uh, risk of like accidentally flying off and hitting a capacitor or something and causing damage. So uh, let's kind of zoom in to show that process. This is the sort of thing that I really like on the Aorus Master though, because it gives you, see, so you press down on it. So still a little bit ways to go. You press down on it and then there you go. Graphics cards out. Put that off to the side. So you got that over there and then there you go. One of these comes in really useful. Um, but with the new motherboard, they have a button over here on the Gigabyte Aorus Master. So that takes care of that problem, so I don't have to do that anymore. So that's really nice. Um, but anyway, you guys, that's my way, that's my method on how to remove the GPU when you have a big air cooler in the way. Um, so I hope you guys find that useful. All right, so in terms of overall like look and feel of this Aorus board, you can see it's it's really heavy. It's got this thick backplate on it that covers most of it. Um, a really giant uh, Gen 5 heatsink for the SSD in the middle there. Uh, so that could present some issues with cooler compatibility. Uh, just kind of to show you guys, here's the old Z690 board, the Gigabyte Gaming X. And just to kind of show the difference in the width. So see how this one, it, it's an EATX board. It hangs beyond that. So you gotta be careful if you're getting one of these high-end boards. Main reason why I'm getting this is the VRM. So we can see the VRM on there is cooled a lot better than on the, uh, the budget board that I got a year ago, or almost a year ago, so. All right, how to install an LGA socket. You're gonna undo this. Intel's one, the latch goes up and the and the, the uh, bracket folds down. AMD, it's the other way around. The latch goes down and the, the bracket folds up. So you basically line that up with the notch. Uh, push down on that. And that pops off, and there you go. That screw is in the way. There you go. All right, that's in. You want to put this in before you mount the cooler bracket, for instance, because that's going to get in the way. In my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the, the brackets in first, or the mounting bracket like this first, before I put the actual heat sink on uh, because I'm going to put this in the case after I get this on because I want to plug those power cables in without the big cooler being in the way. So installing DDR5 is pretty straightforward. You're going to want to go in this one, the one farthest away and the, and the second one. So it's the same as DDR4. That's in. Same deal with this one. So this is the exact same memory that I have in my Ryzen 7950X system. So that's 64 gigs, 32 and 32. 
All right, so I went ahead and I removed this massive heat sink for the Gen 5. But like I said on the live show, I'm not gonna be using this because though it does connect to the CPU, it shares lanes with the graphics card. So as soon as I populate this uh, M.2 slot with a drive, I'll only be able to get X8 out of my graphics card. And I don't wanna do that. So unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to use that. It's kind of a waste of money um, on that port there. I'll we'll to take this off instead and Here's where the real meat and potatoes is. So you got one, two, three, four. One of these goes to the CPU, and that's the one that we're gonna use, and it's PCI Gen 4. And then the other three are gonna go to the chipset. So it's effectively the same in my mind as the Z690. We do gain this fancy latch button here for the graphics card, so. All right, so I checked the, the uh, manual, and it is just like I thought. It is gonna be the second one here. This one is M2A, this one goes to the CPU. This one, this one, and the one over here, these three go to the chipset. So these are where you'd add your second, third, or fourth M.2, but this is gonna be the one that you wanna use. And you're just gonna ignore this one, even though it's Gen 5 capable, until you actually get a Gen 5 SSD and you're okay with running your graphics card in X8. Um, so that's kinda of how we're gonna do that. When you install the M.2, make sure to peel off they have them double-sided, so the bottom side has a heat sink or a thermal pad here. So this is the Gigabyte plastic cover. I peeled it off there. And then likewise on the top, the back of the heat sink, there's also one as well. So you're going to want to peel that off. Make sure you don't forget to do that. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and put the M.2 in here. And these are really easy to install. You literally just line it up and press it down and bam, clicks in. Toolless, really good. Although you still have to use a screwdriver to get this heat sink on and off, so. All right, now we're gonna mount the cooler. I'm gonna show people how to apply thermal paste. First, what I wanna do, before I put the thermal paste, I wanna test fit it. So you can see the cooler fits. All right, so that's good. Okay, and then you literally just kind of, I put the uh, rice grain right in the middle. That's all you need. People are gonna say that's too little or too much or whatever. I've been doing this for years, I don't care. It works. I never thermal throttle. Although this CPU is gonna be a little bit different though. But I know we're gonna have a good mount, so. Basically put that on there. All right, so that's down in there. And then I just take this Be Quiet screwdriver, even though it's a Noctua cooler. And the nice thing about this is it mounts very easily. Just kind of go back and forth. Because the pressure applied as you screw this down is enough to spread the thermal paste naturally. So you don't need a thermal a thermal paste applicator. Doesn't matter. It's, it's completely unnecessary in my experience. Trust me, I've, I've, I've used it before. Tested both with and without it. Same behavior, same performance. All right, so that's it. Now we're just gonna put the fans on, connect the, put the graphics card in, everything, the, the SSDs and I already got my SATA connected. I already got all the, uh, the holes for the board, all nine of those are in, so we're good. Uh, and then we should be good to power it on and see if it works. Okay, so I got everything connected. I peeled all the plastic things off. You can see them like sitting right there. Um, here's the old Alder Lake i7 with the Z690 board waiting to be put into storage. Um, and then, but what I had to change, the only thing I really had to change is this, this capture card down here is the, the older Live Gamer 2 uh, as opposed to the Live Gamer Duo because this is an X4 and that slot down there is only an X1. So unfortunately, it is almost feels a little bit like a downgrade from Z690. And I do only have four SATA as opposed to six SATA on Z690. So honestly guys, uh, if you are looking to upgrade to 13th gen, it is worth looking into X or Z690 as opposed to Z790. I don't really know. Currently I think the Z790 boards are kind of hit or miss in terms of the functionality. Now this board, this Aorus Master does have 10 gig LAN. That's probably where they stole some of the, la the lanes from this. I personally would have rather have lanes to this as opposed to the 10 gig. 
but you know the use case kind of depends. So and this was the only Aura Smasher they had in stock. They did not have any Ace boards um, or any other boards. I didn't want to buy the Maximus because it was too much money, and I basically depleted the entire budget for any any hope of me being able to get a 4090 um, this year by buying this because I already did buy AMD 7950X a month ago. So like basically buying a whole nother high-end desktop, you know, that's kind of, I blew out the budget basically. So um, yeah, that's basically it. And we're gonna fire it up and see if it posts. All right, this is gonna be the moment of truth. These is down here. All right, we have lights. Postcode. This is why I really want postcodes on my motherboards. Memory training, just like AMD. Well, the memory training on DDR5 on uh, 13 gen seems kind of slow. That's weird. I wasn't expecting it to take this long. I mean, at least AMD set expectations, but this is taking pretty long. And there we go. Post. All right. All right, it's already just going straight into Windows. Okay, so we're good. All right, so we're in Windows now. We have CPU-Z pulled up. You can see 13th Gen, uh, 13900K, Raptor Lake, 10 nanometer. So the main board, Gigabyte. Z790 Aorus Master. So it looks like the first batch of these boards shipped with the default, the F3 BIOS. You're going to want to upgrade this. And then, you know, we've got a 6950 XT in here. And the RAM, it looks like we are running uh, 2T. So it looks like it 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 auto defaulted to gear 2 mode. Uh, I was hoping that the IMC might be able to do gear 1 mode on 64 gigabytes. Uh, but that might be a problem. I might have to mess with it later. Um, but we'll see. Because that might impact the benchmarks uh, in a negative fashion. But yeah, it looks like so far everything is good. Uh, if we open up Task Manager, you know, we've got... I did run into problems with uh, the Intel Arc driver. I had to remove the Arc driver because I had a black screen. I couldn't, I couldn't see... Um, at the Windows, like, once I logged in, I had to plug into the integrated graphics. And then I had to disable that to then be able to use my graphics card to, to get a uh, display output. So that was kind of weird. Uh, but you can see, so we, just like with the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X, we now also have 32 threads uh, on an Intel CPU. So that'll be interesting to test and see how that works. Um, looks like I'm, I'm kind of scared for the power consumption and what this is gonna, uh, how, how hot this is gonna get uh, on a Noctua NHD 14 because I used to run the Noctua D14 on a FX9590 and that thing put out a lot of heat and couldn't really keep up with that CPU. I have a feeling this is gonna be the same problem here because last year, or I guess with my Alder Lake system, I was barely able to maintain the 12700K at stock with the Noctua cooler. So I think it's going to be maxed out on this new 13th gen i9. It'll be interesting to see what happens. So, uh, yeah. Alright guys, well if you like these uh, sort of videos, uh, I will probably be doing a live stream later talking about Raptor Lake, the results, and how it compares to Ryzen. Um, I did have an issue with downloading the, the Intel chipset, the GPIO driver off of Gigabyte's website. I had to use ASUS's website to install it. So finally get rid of that unknown device in Device Manager or Device, yeah, so uh, just kind of a, an FYI for those who have a Gigabyte board and are, are wondering why they can't get those drivers to install. I think Gigabyte will probably have to update the download link later, but uh, yeah, I used the one off of ASUS for the Maximus Hero and it worked fine on this Aorus Masterboard. Um, but just wanted to kind of point that out, and this was a little bit, that was the only hiccup that I ran into. Um, but so far, all the hardware seems to work good. The RAM tested fine, everything seems good, the CPU seems good. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is download and install the chipset drivers and that sort of thing. But then after that, we want to do the BIOS update 
So you're going to want to go to the support page for your respective motherboard. In my case, I'm using a Z790 Aorus Master. We're going to download the latest one. And it says in the description here, fix M.2 bandwidth randomly drop issue. So I definitely want to fix that because I don't want my M.2 drive disconnecting or having a bandwidth problem or something like that. So, so I don't know if that's referring to the one that shares lanes with the graphics card, but either way, we don't want to deal with that. So we're going to download the F4 BIOS because we are currently on the release F3 BIOS. We want to get off of that. So I've already went and downloaded that. You can see here on the thumb drive, we've got the, there it is, the Aorus Master 1. Well, I'm not using Flashback. I'm going to actually do this through the BIOS itself. So you can leave the file name like this. You can see I've got some AMD ones on there for the, the other Aorus Masterboard because apparently now I've got two Aorus Masterboards. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and update that BIOS. Okay, so once you're into the BIOS, you're going to want to go to wherever, whatever the button is to access the, the uh, BIOS flash. So in the case of Gigabyte, it's going to be down here where it says Q flash. I'm going to go ahead and hit F8. We're going to do that, and then sure enough, it finds these. Now we definitely don't want to flash these AMD ones on here, so we're going to go ahead and select Z790 or as master. And then it's like, are you sure you want to update? Yes. Okay. In order to make complete update system is going to shut down, QFlash will continue to restart, okay. So when it's doing this, you don't need to mash like any keys. It's automatically going to run the script, so it's already going to do this process. Um, but the key thing you want to do while this is happening is you definitely do not want to disconnect power uh, to the PC while this process is happening. Like this, if 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 it loses power, there's a power outage, or if you accidentally shut off the PC for whatever reason, you could break the motherboard because it could corrupt the BIOS. Uh, now, typically with BIOS flashback, you could recover that way, but if you're on a motherboard that doesn't support that feature, then you really kind of ruin the motherboard if that happens. So, you want to let this run to completion. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much how you update the BIOS on a Gigabyte motherboard or an Aorus motherboard. Um, but the process is pretty much the same for all the other brands as well and it's the same whether you're on amd or intel so all right guys well hopefully you guys found this useful and i will and i will catch you guys in the next one thanks